Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're finally gonna do my eyeshadow palette collection for 2019. The last count that I had, I had 104 palettes. I really wanted to wait to do this video until I had a couple more palettes on the way, like Blue Blood and a few other palettes from some indie brands that I really wanted to look more into, but this is really one of the only times I have to film such a long video, so I thought we could make maybe two parts. This will be the main part for 2019, and then later on in the year, maybe in the summer, I can show you just all of the new palettes I've gotten in 2019. So the plan is, <laughs> this is not organized whatsoever. I'm gonna pull out all of my palettes, show you guys each one, I'm gonna do a quick clean of each drawer, and then, probably off camera, I'll reorganize everything and show you guys the finished product. I'm like looking at this and I have no idea where to start. <laughs> Let's start right here. So I have my two mid-sized Natasha Jonah palettes, the Sunset palette and the Leela palette. This is what my Sunset palette looks like. And this is what my Leela palette looks like. I definitely got more use out of the Sunset one. I don't reach for the Leela as much just because I'm not really partial to purple eyeshadows. Partial to purple eyeshadows. Say that 10 times fast. But yeah, as for, for someone who doesn't like purple eyeshadow as much, I sure have a lot of it. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Next, I have the Jeffree Star Thirsty palette. This was his summer palette from last year, and it's gorgeous. Have I used it a whole lot? Not, not really, no. I need to pull this back out. Especially if I'm going to be tempted by his new summer palette, which I think is coming out like in June. I really do want to pull this out for the summer. This is actually a palette I haven't used yet. This is from Makeup Revolution, and it's the Redemption Eyeshadow Palette Iconic Number no. 3. I actually placed a... A. I actually placed an Ulta order and since I purchased like 10 or $15 worth of Makeup Revolution products, I got this for free. So I haven't tested it out yet. I don't think I've even opened it yet. Yeah, it's still sealed. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to open this and actually use it or just pass it along or maybe include it in a giveaway to someone who can really get some use out of it. Next, I have my one Pat McGrath palette. This is the Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation palette. So I wasn't absolutely like stunned by the quality of this palette. I do like it, but I think the price point was a bit steep for it. I have heard people say that her big palettes are worth it more so than these smaller ones, but I don't think I'm gonna jump and do the 125 for her big palettes because I already have the Natasha Denona ones and the I need to stop or not spend over $100 on an eyeshadow palette. So in the back over here, I kind of have all of like my misshapen or odd shaped eyeshadow palettes. And this section is all like nicely organized by brand. So let's jump back here first. This is just a little Z palette I have of singles. I actually haven't taken these out since I made this mini palette. Back a few months ago, I made an eyeshadow palette <laughs> out of singles for my favorite book and I kept them all in here. So these are all a bunch of different singles from different brands, mostly Colourpop, I believe. Um, but if you wanna see that video, why I picked these, what book I based it on, I'll throw that up in the cards. Next, I have the BH Cosmetics Take Me Back to Brazil palette, and I've been really neglecting this palette. It's honestly quite gorgeous, and it's basically every rainbow color you could ever need, and I don't reach for it. I this came back up because during a recent weekly wishlist or washout I was lusting over a rainbow palette and I realized god I have this palette <laughs> I have this palette so this one I'm gonna try and just leave this on top of my vanity and just reach for it more often next I have my ColourPop just my luck palette I absolutely adore this palette it's not blind you with the mirror but I love the greens if you know me you know I love green eyeshadow and I love all of these green shades this is super reflective. Hello camera. Hello my face. This is the Milani Bold Obsessions palette and I gotta say Milani is just killing it with these palettes. Like it's neutral but the shadows are buttery and beautiful and they blend and they're gorgeous. I just ah. I really want to pick up the rest of the palettes they have in like this line. Next I have my first Blush Tribe palette. This is the Hasina 2. Oh, and look how pretty this is. Like I said before, I don't lean too much towards purple, but I love me some green. 
love me some green i really need to do more looks of this palette and i really do want to look more into some different blush tribe palettes i am trying to focus more on some more indie brands this year and blush tribe is on my list to try and i'm glad i got this one and i can't wait to see what else i can pick up <sighs> This palette is from e.l.f. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's like completely broken. So I purchased this at an e.l.f. store. So I actually went to a physical store and bought it. And when I opened up the packaging and went to open up the palette, that happened. It was clean, broken off before I even opened the box. And I was pretty upset because this is supposed to be like a nice neutral palette from e.l.f. I really wanted to use this in my full face of e.l.f. video, but meh. I think I can just super glue this. Like looking at the hinges, I think I could probably just super glue that. Because it looks like someone dropped it like this. Like in a warehouse or something. So I think I can fix it. Yeah, let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, you see like right there is where the break is. I think I can just like close it and super glue just right there and fix it. Next, I have a palette from Bad Habit. This is the Retro Love palette, which is supposed to dupe ABH subculture. I really keep this around for the shimmers because if you have been following along in my pan that palette, I am currently panning subculture and I think the shimmers in this palette are phenomenal. I think Bad Habit really shines in their shimmer dupes. I do not think their matte dupes are as great. I do not like their matte formula. But the shimmer dupes are great. So as soon as I run out of electric in my subculture palette, I will be pulling this out to use the dupe for electric. I also use the dupe for cube because I hit such hard pan on cube, I actually just cut it out of my palette. I could not use it. So I do like to use psychedelic uh, all over my lid as an inner corner highlight, as a highlight in itself. So I really do love these shimmers and that's why I hold on to this palette. This is a big ColourPop palette that just holds a whole bunch of singles, some from Davina. This is a single from the Jeffree Star Alien palette that I depotted. Uh, just a bunch, a whole bunch of singles eyeshadows. This one is actually a huge double-sided Z palette. That's a face Z palette, so I've got highlighters, I've got a bronzer, and on the other side I've got a Wet n Wild bronzer and highlighter that I've depotted. This is another Face Z palette that I have. I've got a highlighter, I've got another highlighter, I've got a bronzer, I've got a contour palette from Smashbox, and this is a Kevin Aquan bronzer. This is a gorgeous Z palette, and in this Z palette I have a whole bunch of beautiful blue single shadows. I believe most of these are from Davina, and then this is like a highlighter that came in the Davina bundle that I purchased. This is the bundle they came out with after Tarte's failed April Fool's palette last year, and it's beautiful. This is a cute Z palette because like the front is like see-through so you can see what's in it. I have what's left of my Viseart shades right there. And then over here, I have a bunch of other singles. I believe also these are mostly Davina. It looks like it. I have the Emily Once palette from Makeup Revolution. This palette, I thought was actually pretty decent. I did like a palette bingo with this. I love the mirror. This thing is huge. Look at that. <laughs> uh, and the shades are decent, but they're... You really got to build them up to use them. You can't go in like you would with like an ABH palette, you know, but it's Makeup Revolution. So if you are familiar with the formula of their eyeshadows, I think you would like this palette. But it's gigantic. This thing is huge. <laughs> so it pretty much stays in the back of the drawer. I also have the Urban Decay Elements palette. I was so excited to get this palette last holiday season because look at it. This is gorgeous. I also did like a palette bingo with this palette, but really since then I haven't reached for it. I really want to pull it back out because it's gorgeous. All right, moving to the front of this drawer. Let's see, let's see. I have a whole bunch of like e.l.f. palettes. Let's go through those first. This is the e.l.f. Mad for Matte 2 palette. This is the e.l.f. Rose Gold Sunset palette. This is gorgeous. I love this for like early fall late summer this orange in particular i love that shade this is the mad for matte jewel pop palette this is a great option if you're looking for an affordable colorful palette this is the elf 90s mood palette and quite honestly i haven't used this a whole lot since it is 
all shimmer <laughs> but I do love that shimmery green shade and that shimmery red shade Next I have this e.l.f. Baked Eyeshadow Palette. I got this free with an e.l.f. online order and I'm gonna be honest, I haven't touched it. Next let's go through my Kylie palette. So I have this palette. This is the Calm Before the Storm palette from her Weather Collection. Just some gorgeous pastel shades. Next I have last year's Halloween palette and this was actually really pretty. I love the packaging. I love the grungy tones in here, but I'll be honest, I haven't really reached for this since last fall. Next I have the Kylie Blue Honey palette and I believe this was my first Kylie palette and I fell in love with this. I love this shade right here. This is like my one of my favorite like all-time shades of all time. You can get so many like full eye looks out of this palette like Oh, I really just enjoy this palette a lot. <laughs> Next, I have the Kylie Purple palette, and this isn't this is also one I don't reach for as much just because I really don't use purple eyeshadow as often. I love this shade right here. I love like her like bronzy kind of shimmer shades. They're gorgeous. And I love this shade right here, but I I don't reach for them that much. I should challenge myself and do like a month-long purple challenge. <laughs> Next, I have a palette from Melt Cosmetics. This is the Smoke Sessions palette. This is gorgeous. Oh, I also need to pull this out again because I really want to test out these golds more than I have because really I focused on the green side. I didn't focus as much on the gold side when I first got it. Next, I have some Urban Decay palettes. This is the Naked 2 and I actually really liked this palette. This is one of the first ever high-end palettes I ever bought. Next, I have the Naked Heat palette. Oh, very pretty, but you do kind of get like similar looks out of this. So this isn't really, unless you're looking for one particular look, this isn't an all-in-one palette. I would say it's more of a companion palette. Next, I have a MAC palette. This is the Basic B palette. And it's, like it says, kind of basic. I do love this highlighter and I love this like maroon shade down here. But since it's so smoky, I don't find myself reaching for this unless I'm like going out at night. Which, I'm an old grandma, I don't do that as often as I used to. <laughs> Next, I have another Bad Habit palette. This is the Artistry palette, which was supposed to dupe an older um, ABH and Mario palette collab that is no longer available and I just wanted to get my hands on it. So since this palette is mostly shimmers, I do enjoy it. I do not think Bad Habit is good with their matte formula, but their shimmers are beautiful. Next, I have all of my Lorac palettes. I have the first three. So the Lorac Pro 1 has gotten quite a bit of love. I love taking this with me whenever I travel. The Lorac Pro 2, I love this like terracotta kind of shade, it's a gorgeous warm transition shade and I really do like the shimmers down here on the bottom but it is more of your like warm neutral palette. And the Lorac Pro 3 which is your cool toned palette. This shade Jade is beautiful, so is Silver. Oh, navy is beautiful but it's kind of hard to blend out because it's just way too, I don't want to say way too pigmented, but it's really pigmented. I also love the shade Rosé. And last but not least in this drawer, I have my Too Faced palettes. I have the Chocolate Bonbons palette, which I was lusting over, and I'm pretty sure they discontinued the, this because I was only able to find it at TJ Maxx. A palette I love and keep coming back to over and over and over again is the Sweet Peach palette. I've actually hit Pan in my favorite shade, Luscious, over here. I just love how versatile this palette is, and I just keep coming back to it. Next, I have the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette, which is like the second chocolate bar. Uh, I bought this a while ago, and I will say I was sucked in by that blue shade and by like this pink kind of transformy shade. Uh, but it is a very, very neutral palette, and I don't reach for it as often as I would like to. Last but not least, I have the Chocolate Gold Palette, which is a beautiful companion palette. Look at all of those beautiful shimmers. <sighs> And I can smell the chocolate from here. Oh, geez, Jesus. <laughs> so we have one empty drawer. Oh, that squeak was not pretty. Let's move on to the next one. 
This drawer is even more of a, a hot mess. <laughs> this is the main reason why I need to reorganize everything because I ended up just kind of throwing palettes into here. But underneath the mess, I tried to organize. <laughs> okay. I have the Carly Bible Deluxe Palette from BH Cosmetics. I actually really like this palette and I just mentioned it in like my five favorite affordable, not five favorite, but like my favorite affordable palette video that I did as a collab. So if you missed that, I'll throw that up in the cards. But it is such a great palette and I'm actually kind of sad. I think they discontinued this. Some people mentioned that they've been seeing it like at TJ Maxx or Marshalls, but I really think this one was really nice. Next, I have the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette, the original collab palette, and uh, it's huge, but it's beautiful. I honestly think this is like one of the only Morphe things that lives up to the hype that it got. It's, it's awesome. I'm going to be totally honest, I haven't used either of these Profusion eyeshadow palettes yet. I really wanted to get enough products to do a full face of Profusion first impressions. I haven't gotten that yet. <laughs> so I've got the Wanderlust palette and I have the Temptress palette. Ooh, next a palette from BH Cosmetics I love. This is the original Zodiac palette. <sighs> this is beautiful. I love this palette so much. <laughs> I think I definitely like this better than the newer one that I also have, but this is just so good. The only thing I don't like is this highlighter. It's not good as a cheek highlighter, but as an inner corner highlighter or a brow highlight, it's bomb. But I think they wanted it to be like a cheek highlighter and I didn't like it. It didn't really blend out the way it should. Speaking of, this is the Zodiac Love Signs palette, the new Zodiac palette from BH Cosmetics, and it's also gorgeous. I, I was just definitely leaning more towards the shades of the first palette, but this one is still very pretty, and I love the brighter shades you get in here. I also like this highlighter a lot better. The formula of this one's a lot better. It actually works as a highlight, and it blends out nicely. So this highlighter, A+, plus. Uh, the shade selection, I liked in the original palette better. <laughs> I have the Kat Von D 10th Anniversary Palette. This is what it looks like. I think when I first purchased this a year and a half ago, I did like a palette bingo or something, a palette roulette with it. But honestly, since then, I haven't touched it. Next, I have a palette from Pure. This is the Soiree, Soiree, Soiree I cannot pronounce that word, uh, Diaries palette. And this is one of my favorite neutral palettes ever. It is gorgeous. <laughs> Next, I have just like a ColourPop Z palette that has all of the shades from my Depotted, or not all of the shades, most of the shades from my Depotted Jeffree Star Alien palette. I rode the struggle bus to potting this, but I'm ultimately I'm glad I did it. So if you missed how badly I struggled to potting this, I'll throw that video up in the cards. Next, I have a palette from Alamar Cosmetics that I got in a BoxyCharm. It's a cute little palette. I like the blues. I love this shade up here. This one is gorgeous, but definitely haven't been reaching for like these mattes down here. I think I'm probably gonna like just depot this top quad and like declutter this, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Ooh, look how pretty this is. Next, I have the Urban Decay Distortion Palette. This is beautiful. I love this middle row. The top row is supposed to be like transformer shades. I haven't tested them out as much as I should but I love like this orange this green this blue ha huh. let's go through all of my Juvia's Place palettes then because I have a stack of them first I have the Warrior palette which is also another beautiful neutral palette that I mentioned in my favorite affordable neutral palette video I have the Warrior 2 which is some beautiful beautiful matte grungy neutral shades. I just, ah. Uh, I really don't think a lot of the pictures online do this palette justice because I didn't really want to get this until I saw a, an Instagram post from, I believe it was Lacey of Spooky Lips and Fat Hips who posted this and the colors looked so different in her lighting. And honestly, they're gorgeous. Just don't believe the studio lighting because <laughs> this is actually a gorgeous palette. Next, I have the Deuce palette, which... Does this not just look like Easter to you? <laughs> this is gorgeous. I love this green shade over here. I love this like duochrome shade up here. I love the pink. I love this like deep silver shade. This is this is a gorgeous palette and I need to bring it back out again. I love this palette. The next palette that I fell in love with, the Tribe palette. 
This is stunning. Not only is the packaging moi, the shades are gorgeous. I did an in-depth review of this palette and ah, uh, I love this palette. <laughs> Next I have the Zulu palette that I was finally able to pick up when I saw it in store at Ulta. I will say I haven't used this palette. I've swatched it a few times, but honestly I haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of it. This is one I need to like leave out on the top of my vanity and actually dig into. Last but not least of the Juvia's palettes, this is the Festival palette and this is one, I ordered this one online and unfortunately like this Ofala shade came totally shattered and I had to repress it. They're pretty hard to repress and I actually got a little bit trapped in that shade over there. Uh, this is still a pretty palette. I don't reach for it as often as I do the other palettes. Um, I think particularly because this shade kind of shattered in transport, but it is still a gorgeous affordable palette. Over here I have a Marc Jacobs palette. Brand new. This is the palette in Editorial and I purchased this while I was still panning my 2018 Pan That palette, which was a Marc Jacobs palette in Lolita. And I said I wouldn't touch this until I had panned that entire palette. Well, I still haven't touched this. <laughs> so I'm also going to leave this out and I think I want to do a video with this because I've been waiting so long to actually like get my hands on it. I have some ColourPop palettes next. So this first ColourPop palette is the All I See is Magic, which was the 2017 holiday palette. Was it? Honestly, I can't remember. They come out with some of the stuff. I, I can't keep it all straight. This is a pretty palette. I don't reach for it as often, but I do like that they expand to these larger palettes because their eyeshadows are gorgeous. And I'd like to see them get more creative with these bigger palettes. Next, we have one of my favorite ColourPop palettes of all time. This is the Good Sport palette. Look how beautiful this is. Ah! <laughs> I love all the shades in here. God, this shade, uh, Ebb, down here is beautiful and so unique in my collection. I love Rookie. I love this shade over here. Ah, God. Mm, this, this palette screams fall to me. When I think of fall, I think of this palette. And I fall in love. And I fall in love! Okay, stop with the bad puns, let's go. Next I have the ColourPop Element of Surprise palette, which I will say I haven't been reaching for. If I were to declutter a palette, it would probably be this one, but I do like this shade right over here. Eh. The packaging is beautiful, like it's gorgeous, but yeah. Next we have the OG, the first ColourPop palette, the Yes Please palette. Ugh. This is so good. I feel like everyone should have this palette. It's so affordable. It is a great dupe for the Natasha Denona Sunset palette that I had earlier. It's gorgeous and it's affordable and the shades are awesome. Just ah. Uh. The only downside to this literally is just the packaging because the packaging gets so dirty. But you know what? I'll get over it. Next I have two palettes from the Balm. I have the Meet Matrimony and the Meet Matt Adore palettes. This is the Meet Matador palette. As the title would suggest, they are all matte shades. These are great, like, supplemental palettes to your collection. If you're looking for some nice matte shades to really bring into your collection. My personal favorite is the Meet Matrimony palette because these are beautiful. You've got, like, some deep shades. You've got a nice matte black down here. You've got some transition shades and... I think this, if you were to get any balm palette, I would suggest this one. And also look at Matt, he's so cute. <laughs> this is going to be so hard to focus on, but next I have a BH Cosmetics palette. This is the Glam Reflection Smoke palette. So it's a very smoky palette. I actually reviewed this palette a long time ago, really enjoyed it. And it was the first time a brand like retweeted a look I did with a palette. <laughs> so I think that's what's keeping me to this palette is like the sentimental reasoning behind it. But it is still a really good palette, but I haven't been drawn to any of the other palettes in this line. This is really the only one that kind of like jumped out to me. I think especially because of like this bronzy orangey one over here, this shade over here, and like this blue. Next I have another palette from Bad Habit. This is the Athena palette, which is supposed to dupe the Huda Beauty palette, uh, god, the name is escaping me, Desert something? 
probably. Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, I actually really like this palette. Um, like I said, I think BH shines with their shimmers. And I don't even like pressed glitters. I really don't. But this one was actually pretty nice. So, throwing that out there. This part of the palette, really nice. This part, meh. It's decent. I will say, I haven't reached for this as often as I thought I would. So this might be on the chopping block. Speaking of Huda Beauty, I have three of like the mini Obsessions palettes. I think my favorites are a tie between the Electric Obsessions and the Smoky Obsessions. This is the Smoky Obsessions right here. If you're traveling a lot, this is actually beautiful for travel. I love it. It's the perfect nighttime like glam smoky eye right there in one package. The Electric Obsessions was a little bit disappointing just in what shades they chose to be matte versus shimmer. I I would like this to be like inverted. Like anything that they made matte, I wanted it to be a shimmer and anything they made shimmer, I wanted that to be a matte. <laughs> so that's it, it's still a decent palette. Beautiful colors. They blend out really nicely, but I kind of wish they would have chosen the mattes versus shimmers a bit differently. This one was a bit underwhelming. This is the Mauve Obsessions palette. And it's pretty, but... Uh, meh. Meh. Next, I have another MAC palette. This is the Semi Sweet Times 9 palette, and I will 100% say... I bought this because A, I was curious about MAC eyeshadows and wanted to see if they really lived up to the hype, and B, I love this row right here, and that's it. Do I reach for this? Barely at all. Hardly at all. This also might be on the chopping block. I have two small Wet n Wild trio slash quads. This is the original Walking on Eggshells that everyone and their mother used to talk about like loving and I found it on clearance. It was like $1.95 so I picked that up. I also picked up the reformulated Walking on Eggshells and I really wanted to do like a comparison between the two and I literally never got to it so <laughs> I still have both of those. I also have a buttload of the new Wet n Wild palette so let's go through those real quick. This is the Wet n Wild palette in Stop Playing Safe. I love this shade right here. It's gorgeous. This is the palette in Not a Basic Peach. This is the palette in VI Purple. This is the palette in My Glamour Squad. This is their reformulated Comfort Zone palette. I will say I tried the original Comfort Zone palette and actually didn't like it. Unpopular opinion. But this one, I actually really enjoyed. And this is the palette in Cosmic Collision. I do have one Kat Von D quad that I picked up almost two years ago at TJ Maxx. I never reached for this. And I tried depotting this and it did not go well. So another palette on the chopping block. Next I have this NYX Ultimate Brights palette. And I gotta say... I really wasn't impressed by the pigmentation of this palette. You have to work so hard and build up shades so much. And I, I know I have other rainbow palettes that work better. So another palette on the chopping block. Next I have another ColourPop palette. This was from the Bretman Rock collab and this is the palette in Wet. I've barely touched this palette. But I will say I'm excited to try out these two shades right here. Like this green looking shade and like the silver shade. Next, I have a ColourPop, like, four-pan palette that I got when I purchased four singles, and right now there's only two singles in here. <laughs> I feel like I need to just get these out of the palette and probably give the palette itself away. I have a Natasha Denona five-pan palette. This is the pan palette number two. So this is actually, like, a gorgeous deep neutral palette. I did a spotlight on petite palettes featuring this palette so if you're interested I can throw that up in the cards. It's a gorgeous palette Um, I would say if you are interested in Natasha Denona pick up one of these and try the formula out before you jump from one of the more expensive ones because while this is expensive for a five pan palette it's cheap it's cheap as hell compared to the rest of her palettes. <laughs> Next, I have the Too Faced Natural Eyes palette. This is one of their tin nine pan palettes. Honestly, I keep this around for more sentimental reasons. I've had this palette since I was in college. <laughs> it's old, I've got some pan. I'm sure this probably isn't the greatest anymore, but sentimental reasons. 
Last, we have some of these City Mini palettes from Maybelline. This is the palette in Matte About Town. This is the palette in Urban Jungle. This is the palette in Rooftop Bronzes. And this is the palette in Graffiti Pop. And with that, the drawer is empty. Oh, I'm gonna clean this drawer out and then I have a couple of other palettes that are stored in other places in my room to show you before I start reorganizing these drawers. All right, so over here on my bookshelf is where I keep the majority of my ABH palettes. So I have Subculture right here. I have Sultry and then the new Sultry dupe. I tested out Temptress from Alter Ego. I have the Norvina palette. I have Riviera where I just did a full review on this palette. I'll link it up in the cards if you're interested. I have Soft Glam. And last but not least, I have Modern Renaissance. All right, and last but not least, let me show you guys the palettes I've been keeping up here on top of my vanity. These are palettes that are either brand new and I need to test out or ones that I really want to focus back in on. These Maybelline City Mini palettes are new to my collection. I haven't seen these ones before. This is in the shade Diamond District, and this one is in Blushed Avenue. These are new quads from Wet n Wild from their Rebel Rose collection. I picked up House of Thorns and Bed of Roses. So I haven't tried these out yet. I really want to. I actually want to do a spotlight on petite palettes with both of these. So keep your eye out for when that video comes out. And last but not least, I brought back out Blood Sugar. I'm keeping it right here on my vanity. I really wanted to focus on this now that we have Blue Blood coming out. I actually purchased it the day it released, and it's on the way, but I haven't received it yet. But this is what my Blood Sugar looks like. It is gorgeous. I love this palette, and I really want to try using this in combination with Blue Blood when I can finally get it. It hasn't shipped yet. I'm, I'm like waiting with bated breath for that to ship. All right, so the drawers are now all reorganized. Let's take a look. This is my newly organized bottom drawer. I have it all organized by size and by brand for the most part. I have all my color pop palettes back here. I've got some kind of miscellaneous ones right there. I've got all of my Wet n Wild. These are Huda. These are Maybelline. This is all Elf. And it's just a lot more organized than it was before. I'm actually really proud of this top shelf because what I did is I kind of shifted or reversed the way I had it before. Now I have all of my easily identifiable palettes in the back and I brought up all of my bigger palettes, the ones I don't reach for as much, here in the front. So as you can see I have all of my Juvia's Place, all of my Too Faced, Urban Decay, Natasha Denona, some Jeffree Star, and then up here I have my singles that I don't reach for as much the BH Cosmetics Take Me Back to Brazil, some of the Profusion palettes, and then all of my big palettes are right there. So thank you guys so much for watching this collection video. I definitely need to go through the rest of my drawers because they're all as big of a hot mess as these were. <laughs> so don't forget to subscribe if you would like to check out the rest of my declutter slash reorganization videos as they come out. Thank you guys again for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye!